So I got a hot take. All right, let's hear it. 30 second rule yep. doesn't need to exist. Really? Doesn't need it. Hello folks, welcome back to Beyond the Basket. This week I'm here with former minor league professional baseball player Luke Sampson. He's currently an up and coming star in the disc golf scene, recently taking a second place at Goat Hill. Luke, what do you think about this week? Uh, it's long, a lot of walking out here. I'm ready to try out the new cast blast driver. I'm pretty stoked to be here. New cast blast yeah, driver? Yeah, yeah, the gold. So uh, I don't know if you're Swedish, you're probably like gold. Are we, gonna, we are. are we going to see it in the event this week? Oh yeah, it's got PDJ approved on Monday, so All right. it's, uh, it's fast disc, it glides a lot, so you guys are going to get a chance to see it. Perfect, and we're here at OTB in Stockton, California. Let's go ahead and check out the course. So a baseball Pico's game Professional seen. Baseball League, just not, not the uh, MLB affiliate, MLB minor league, so. So it's not as cool? For proper curve. I mean, it was bottom of the barrel, like I got paid 50 bucks a week to get me a place to live, and they said, here you go. I could have stuck it out. I always knew that I was gonna be out here one day, so it was like, you know, a battle between do I wanna keep playing baseball or do I need to get out here? And, and here I am. So, you know, that's it, <laughs> end of the story. <laughs> All right, we're here at hole one, 842 foot par four with a mando that we need to go left of down there. So we're gonna be throwing probably hyzers off the tee here. Maybe a roller out of you? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Way. no way. Okay. Zero rollers today. Zero rollers out Zero. here. Okay. That's looking pretty darn good. Dang, Nick. Hey, I can throw a little bit. You put a move on that thing. So that's in prime real estate right there. Hey, you know, it's not beach living, but. Two off the, two off the first or not? For you? Yeah. yeah, I'll give you two, you need right. them. Yeah. See, that's how it's, what it's supposed to look like. Wow. Oh, not bad, not bad. Shot a week ago. The gold. Oh boy. Was that the same disc, sir? Same disc. So we kind of got it into it already, but. Uh -huh. So Pico League, not minor. P Picos. Picos League. Yep. And so, so how does. How does being a traveling amateur baseball player or semi-professional baseball player compare to being um, you know, a rookie on the Pro Tour? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think that in general, like the sports are just way different. Baseball has just been around so much longer, like, you know, and so honestly, from my perspective, the competition in disc golf is way less, if way I'm being less. honest. Yep. Like, you know, everybody and their brother was like taught to be like, oh, I'm going to be a pro baseball player, I feel like, you know, yep. in America. Um, I, I mean, it's honestly, every, it's the same in a sense, you know, it's just in terms whatever of like, you put into it, you're going to get out, you know, that's yeah. really in that sense. But what about in terms of like traveling and getting from place to place? This like, is way more far spread. Like the Picos League was only on the southwest corner of america you know okay so in other words you didn't have to travel a whole ton no i mean there was definitely times where we'd uh no we had to travel a good bit like you know we had face we we go to Roswell, new mexico oh okay or roswell or whatever it is we went to uh and we went all over like just california some and california's a pretty big state so so would you say it's more enjoyable? No, I don't know. It's just different. Less... It's totally different. I think that it's... So it's hard to even compare them. It's apples and oranges. It's Yeah, it's totally different. Dang, okay, I see you. I see you, Nick. Hey, I'm up here, dude. It's like I kind of like... I find myself getting a little like... Expecting a lot from disc golf, which is good because, you know, like I know that like... Like a part of me knows that if I could have just been still grinding in that league and hopefully, you know, made an exhibition team and gone to a higher league. But me knowing that I didn't is really like pushed me like, listen, like, you know, you gotta, you gotta see it through first off and 
like you got to expect greatness from disc golf you know like disc golf yeah. is in its infancy and expecting it to be more professional is i mean it's good for everybody i feel like it's not just good for me yeah yeah we've got a good thing going for us right now that's for sure yeah throw a roller bro you want to see something else just throw a roller yeah let's see it we got scorpius yeah another roller Nice. This is gonna be a good throw. Ah, uh, I'm gonna try one of those out. Don't mind if I go through y'all. That's cool with me. That's cool with these guys. I'll get out of the way. I'm gonna very slow and see now. I'll throw one more. <laughs> oh, bud. So look, so you man, grew up uh, just northeast of Chicago, is that right? Uh, mainly just or north. northwest, just north, or just north, northwest, north, northwest. Yeah. So how was that? Let's talk about that. Uh, Multi-sport athlete, I would assume. Yeah, growing up. I played baseball mainly when I was growing up. Then uh, when I got to high school, I played lacrosse. Ooh. Yeah, lacrosse is fun. Um, yeah, I bet you liked lacrosse. Yeah, I love lacrosse. You gotta hit some people. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's, we did so many fun drills where it was just like, basically just take the other dude out and let the, your teammate grab the ball, you know, like you try to box the other person out, basically just a big scrap. So then when did you really get introduced to like disc golf? Um, I got introduced when I was young, mad young. Okay. Like, I think like probably first or second grade. Really? Yeah, my brother showed me. Okay. And my neighbors. And then, um. Middle school, I played maybe a handful of times, maybe like 10 times in middle school throughout. I remember going out to the course with a buddy, and then uh, high school, I remember going to the first league like when I was like 15, yeah, and just loving it. Like, played the best round of my life. Like, and then they learned, like, you know, they're telling me Heiser, Anheuser, turnover. I'm like, what is, what is this? What is all this terminology? What is this here? And then I remember I had like a Force and a Comet and a Yeti. Those are my main discs. Yeah. Yeti Pro ADR. And when I got back into baseball, I, I knew that I was going to play disc golf. So I would be practicing hard, like doing both, you know? Yeah. So I always kind of played it, but. Because you didn't, you got your PDGA membership, what, five years ago now? Yeah, but that was still when I was playing baseball. And I uh, took like five years off from tournaments. You know, I played like three uh, advanced tournaments and then took about five years off. Okay, so when you played those ones, you didn't have a number yet then even? No, I did have a number. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2012 or something. My uh, best pitching coaches that ever taught me anything, Coach Nathan Kilcrease. He was five foot four. Played, uh, he was a, played in the majors. Was a Friday night starter for Alabama Crimson, Crimson Tide, I believe that. Is that the Alabama, right? Crimson yeah. Tide? Roll Tide. He said, hey, lead with that, that heel forward, and this elbow is your scope right here. So scope it up. Helps the side hand. So you guys know. Scoping it up. Yeah. Okay. Folks, we're here at hole six. 364 foot par three with the water on the right. Green over here, that's also OB. I'm probably throwing a sidearm because that's what I'm comfortable throwing this distance at and I just feel like I have a lot more room for air. This gentleman here though, yeah. thinks the backhand's the route. I, I threw a sidearm in that pond twice last year here, so I'm just gonna opt for making a safer miss. Really don't wanna lose this one. That's a super safe miss. Please get down. Oh! Safe. Oh, safe. That's a putt yeah, even. That's close. Man. All right, so if you were building a dream card to play with for a round, who would be on it? Hmm. Climo Macbeth Wysocki. Straight, straight up. Straight up. Straight chance. up. 
All right. I'm trying to get down with those guys, you know? That's a pretty good card. Not yeah. gonna lie. That's pretty legendary. Where would it be at? I think it'd be at, uh, be at Iron Hill. Iron Hill? Are you gonna play that this year? Yeah, I think. Is For it Birdie a, Open? The which one? Birdie Open? No. Why? No. I'm probably playing something else. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, just got annihilated by that win. Don't get used to it. Oh, opting for the safe route. Oh, I thought it would stay over. That's got to be a layup from there. Oh, you might be OB from over whoa. there. Whoa. Oh, whoa, don't be saying things like that. So that's the route. Wow. Yeah, that should be pretty decent. That was really good. So I got a hot take. All right, let's hear it. 30 second rule. Yeah. Doesn't need to exist. Really? Doesn't need it. What should it, should it, should it just be? Should be, we already got the darn, every, the officials, whatever they call them, the uh, court marshals, course yep. marshal. Yep. Just like uh, in PGA, it should be, if some group is, you know, causing a super slowdown, court, court dude comes out, course marshal comes out, tells them to hurry up, gives them a warning. It should be like that. Because 30 seconds is not enough time. 30 seconds is not enough time. No, especially with all the, you know, you get stuck in the woods. Where do you draw the line? Like, you know? Where do you draw the line at like assessing your live? Yeah, exactly. Like, Where's the, the point that, that he throw? stepped up to his live versus where where can you draw the line of distraction to restart? You know, like all the above. Yeah, that's that's very true actually. Is that our basket right there? Yep. I mean that's a pretty good one, I think. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I feel like I need more time. And so I rush, I would say. But then what happens when you get the guy that takes a minute and 30 seconds each time? Yeah, minute yeah, 20. Court martial on him. Yeah, oh. but then where's his line that he draws to say, okay, I can give him a warning now? Uh, if there's too many cards that are built up waiting. Got it. Okay. Uh-oh. Come out. Nice shot. Wow. So would your suggestion be like moving it to like 45 seconds or like a minute? A minute or? sounds better to me for sure. I forget which golfer it was, but he said, uh, I think it was like Jack Nicholas or Jack Nicholson or whatever. He said you could, people said that you could eat a sandwich during the time he stood over a putt. But he never took a putt till he felt he wasn't, or till he felt he was ready, you know? Yeah. Hey, wow, you're dude. out, dude. You made a great shot there. Thanks, bud. Nice spot. Thank you. Nice. Shoo. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Three down. No, I got a bogey on the other one. So oh yeah, that's I'm right. At, yeah, now I'm at three, now I'm at two down. And you're at one down. Uh, yes. That's gotta get legs. That's gotta get legs. For what? Plenty of legs, this guy. Be out here just doing a little. A uh, few of the tee pads are like, they got like puddles in them, so trying to drop them. Good oh, man. Wow. Is that that new disc again? Yeah, that's the same disc. Woo! Shoo! Scorcher! Not bad. Not bad. So, your first win. 
First win. Actually came in Canada, is that correct? Oh, it did, yeah. I guess uh, it's some flex start or something. <laughs> yeah. Did those count as wins? Well, I guess you Why got... would it not? Well, it's a C tier. You're right. right. It happened on, like, a, hey, y'all have a good one. Probably happened on, like, on a Tuesday afternoon or something, but, uh... So you don't really remember it? Your first win? Come on. I don't know, man. This don't count. I remember my first, like... So what does count that you remember? My first one that counted was the Yetter, which, uh, that was a B tier on a Sunday. And that event, I remember pretty well. The first round, I like, I, as a Saturday, I played an event on the west side of the state. Or what park was this in? That was at uh, Tyler State Park in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you ever played there. It's I beautiful. have not. Okay. You played? You played there? I have not. Oh. Nope. But uh, like, a, there was an hour change in time, and I woke up thinking I had an hour to get ready, and I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't have any breakfast, and nothing, no coffee. I had like three warm-up throws, and I hadn't even played the course. Like, I went to the course earlier in the week and took notes because it was pouring rain. I just walked the course with an umbrella, took notes, showed up that morning, and I shot the course record the first round, which was <laughs> sick. And then I ended up winning the tournament. It was the first one, first one I ever got. Well, I guess if you, if you count the uh, C tier, or the uh, whatever it's called. Yeah. Black start. I mean, you, those, those technically count. They're, yeah, they un, count. they're, they're under career wins well, for if your you name. Ask, if you ask Schweibe, they definitely count. <laughs> <laughs> So who did you beat at this event? Cam Messerschmitt, Chris Villa, those are the two most, and then a bunch of other people that probably nobody's ever heard of. <laughs> uh. Woo, that was close. Woo. <laughs> That was extremely I was close. Flirting with it. Lefty? Yeah. Oh, watch out, folks. This is going to ace. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. Oh, my goodness, dude. That's your best shot. <laughs> that wasn't bad, huh? How much have you worked on your lefty? Quite a bit. Yeah. When I was playing ball, I would go to the field and throw discs after, and after I was done throwing righty, I'd throw lefty because instead of going to the gym and throwing these mat balls against the wall, trying to get my hips quicker, I'd just throw a disc lefty. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'll just snap my hips. For real. That's sick, dude. Yeah. I was looking pretty looking good. Looking good, a little high. Excuse me. Oh, into the ground. So, so far you've won about 34,000, give or take, in your disc golf career earnings. Mm -hmm. Something about that, right around there, I think. How does that compare to your baseball career earnings? Oh, way more. Way more? Yeah. No. Like I said, I was getting paid 50 bucks a month. I mean, 50 bucks a week. I don't remember that. So let's let's go through that again. Yeah. You're getting, so when you were in your league. Yeah, it's just fifty bucks a week. They gave you a place to sleep, gave you food. What kind of sleeping arrangement was it? Uh, I was at some lady's house. So, <laughs> yeah. It was not. It was not ideal. It's got to skip. It should. Park. That's for. Oh my. Yeah. That's why you throw a motor, folks. All right, we're here at hole 18. It is a 689 foot par four with a Mando on your right side. You're gonna try and push as long as you can and then you're gonna shoot over to the right to the basket. Luke has a one stroke lead and he's gonna go first. Side hand, all day. It's pretty good. Go right though. Oh no. Oh, oh be deep. So Luke. So Nick. What would you say is the most underrated disc for a new player? The Falk. The Falk and why? It's super good because it just glides and it, it goes far at slow speeds. It can, if you're a newbie, you can get to do just left turning. You can get to do just right turning. 
you learn how to control angles with that disc, you know? And as a somebody, as you get harder throwing, you'll be able to really just be able to learn how to throw on a steep hyzer, which is ideal for the woods, in my opinion. Snap it on the line yeah, and then... Exactly. Do you have a preferred plastic? Uh, K1, for sure. K1. For K1 hard. Sure. Okay. It's gotta be Rask. No! Is that it? It's gonna be close. Oh! Uh oh. That's probably right next to my Rask OB. That's OB for sure. You're out. Oh, I know I'm out. Oh, I'm in. Let's go. What? Shoot, shoot. Dang, double OB on the last hole, folks. Dang, I could lay this one up. I'm sorry. Dang, sorry to do that to you like this. That's fine, dude. It's all Just fine. letting the crowd down. Nice, good finish. Thank you. Take you to five? Yeah. Good, good finish. Hey, appreciate that. Not, Not too, too shabby. shabby. Go in. Nice, dude. Hey. Great putt, man. Thank you. Yeah. Saving bogey from 42 feet. Let's go. Luke, I want to thank you for joining us today. If you want to catch all 18, head on over to our Patreon site and subscribe so that way you can catch all 18 holes. Luke, once again, thanks for joining. Is thank there you. anybody you want to shout out before we leave today? Yeah, Team Cassaplast and Cassaplast Discs. Best disc on the planet right there, all the way from Sweden. So go check them out. And if you're looking to buy them here in the States, PurelineDiscGolf.com. So check it out. All right, folks. Thanks again for joining us on Beyond the Basket. Until next time, how we doing? Keep it moving.